Most people in America are familiar with what their rights are and are not. If they do not understand this, then they have not matured fully into adulthood. We know from scientific studies that have been posted through Frontline News and other very good quality PBS newscasters that a fully-fledged functioning brain hits us about age 24 unless there, of course, some psychological, emotional, or intellectual, and sometimes spiritual deficits. That can happen in a community where people are not caring about child-rearing from the scientific, intellectual, educational methodology that we have known in America for a good 40 to 60, possibly 70 years. The study of child development has been going on in America for a millennium, it feels like, but definitely for a very long time. So there's really no excuse for a parent that doesn't know how to parent their own child. The foolishness that I see is that we have a lot of people trying to create babies before they're fully mature enough to handle the responsibility. What I see are young people making a lot of purchases as if their free and fancy foot is going to work for them. And it's great if they've got two sides of grandparents that can help support them financially. But at some point, a player walks away. And when a player walks away, then there's a financial burden for the single mom to pay. People don't live frugally enough today is absolute truth. The liars of America are all amongst us. A lying boy will say, I'm going to give him $20 so I can steal something from him, or I can hurt him, or I can do something in the middle of the night because my friend set me up to do this. What I see is a lot of high school-oriented children that are trying to be generous, but at the same time, it may not actually be their funds. It might be something funds that they were gifted by their parents, and I appreciate the lot. But at the same time, they could be a freshman in college, which means they have a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more maturity, but they still don't quite get life. You see, life in America is about service, and service is never harmful to a person's legal name, actual financial records, medical records, legal records, legacy records, meaning their life insurance policies, and those things belong to the individual not some medical practitioner, not some mental health worker, and most certainly not some crisis intervention bullshit worker who is lying through her teeth about what she feels she has the right to do for someone. The liars of America like to lie. And what we know is in law enforcement, sheriff and their entire staff, in terms of their work, often lie. They're not paid to lie, they just choose to lie. Maybe they're hired because they're good liars, or they're marvelous bullshit tellers, or they're great jokesters. But here's the reality. American citizens do not like liars. Very few people want a liar in their life. Very few people want liars like me and like you in their life. Now, why do I say that? Because a polite lie is a polite lie. But a pestilent liar is something that law enforcement call anyone that they don't like. And they marvelously think they have the right to infiltrate their financial worth, their actual homes, their actual documents, their actual records, and they will produce lying records as if they are the federal government when they're really just local state police officers. You see, there's a difference between a federal agent and a local one. A federal agent is very aware of federal laws that impact the ability for them to do their job. A local agent bases himself fully on his opinions and therefore abuses, sexual assault, mutilations, and molestations can occur because that individual has no right to speak about cases, but they do all the time. In life, we have liars in America. When I reference myself, I regard the fact that I might tell a white lie to protect myself from abusers in America, but at the same time, I don't blatantly lie. If you ask me a point-blank question, I will probably answer you with fortitude and forthrightedness, but I will never take my information that I learn from you in confidence or confidentiality and share it with another human being. I rarely do that, and I would never do that to try to harm someone or try to abuse their records. You see, in America we have rights, and the rights of adulthood do not belong to a community, they do not belong to a mobbing group, 
and they do not belong to a trinity or a lying group of Christianity, Muslimness, or any other fucking religion out there. The liars of America will lie about their rights to take information and share it across their network. The liars of America work in law enforcement, work in mental health, work in crisis intervention, and what's the other group thing? That, oh, social work. That is the liar of America. I once had an insurance broker that kept referring to herself as an old social worker, and I thought, go the fuck back to that work, because I'm not paying you for this shit that you spew into my life. I'm paying you for the car insurance of my vehicle, and you failed me, therefore I no longer wish to utilize you. You've insulted me, so there's no fucking way I'm referring you, and at this point, your last job, which was years ago, and you pay maybe a whopping $400 because you're friends with the owner of the establishment where you have business in a downtown affluent community, doesn't bother me. What bothers me is your attitude. And I didn't appreciate you telling people my name at a community event that had no right to be fucking walking up to me in their plain clothes as officers trying to talk to me. Under no fucking circumstances does anyone have the right to solicit information. And at no time do you, in the fact that you build a relationship with someone, have the right to provide that information to someone else. Have I made myself clear? I don't know. But the liars of America think that their rights belong to them, but everyone else's rights also belong to them. And that's the lie they tell themselves. When I get angry about things, I'm passionate about rights. I'm not pestilent about rights. I'm articulate about our rights underneath American laws. And American laws are what we live our rights by. But stupid people live by their opinions. This afternoon I had a young man who's an absolute nuisance to me. Don't even know this man, but in the three or four interactions I've had with him, he's obnoxious and he acts like he's 12. My guess is he's probably pre-30s, maybe early 30s, if that. But he's annoying as hell. He walks up to me and he demands that I give him money. Give me some motherfucking money, man. And I'm looking at him going, I'm not your father, and I'm not your provider, and I'm not going to be your missionary, and I'm not going to be your minister. Even though I have the right to choose to do that, I will never do that, based on your abatement of your understanding of your rights. At the same time, he said, I want you to suck my dick, bitch. And at that point, I saw his solicitation of prostitution, of which I'm not participating in, and no fucking person has a right to presume that I'm going to be human trafficked by their attitudes about my body or my privacy of nature. Does that make your self-understanding to me? Do you see that your reality has lied to yourself about your rights? The motherfuckers in jail, the sheriff, lock people in a the tower. They shave them inappropriately. They shave their body. They shave their leg. They shave their nads. And they think they have the right to do this by putting you out with some sort of, I don't know, tainting of food? In life, we have the truth and we have a lie. The truth is you had no lawful right to do it. The truth is it was sexual harassment. The truth is it was a form of molestation and mutilation to me. The truth is it was a practical rape of me. And the truth is your mental health people had no fucking right to try to taint me into something that is not my soul and not my spirit and not my wish for my life. Your fucking attitude, Lacus, will get you caught every day by the federal government, the Secret Service, and any other fucking law enforcement officer that knows how to profile you better than they can profile me. You see, I move my life in a way that's appropriate to my faith. Most people live their life based on what's appropriate to their jobs because most people spend 40 plus hours a week, sometimes 60, sometimes 80 hours a week servicing their job and not having a life in balance. Life balance is eight areas of life. And if you're not focusing on life balance, your life is out of whack. You're probably out of time and most likely your children are not going to mind you at the end of your life, and you'll be suffering for your poor parenting. Now in life we can speak the truth about liars, and liars have information that they disclose that is a lie. But truth tellers, soothsayers, have information that they do not disclose because it is private in nature, confidentiality is their reality, and most people have certain things that they keep motherfucking private to themselves. The liars of America feel they have the right to gossip like schoolgirls and ruin lives with their lies, that they thought they had rights to tell and disclose private information that was never in a million years the right to even know. The liars of America work as nurses, they work as doctors, like the one that said he'd serve me and then he decided not to, that left me in the lurch 
on medications that were right for my body, my cellular health. That is medical malpractice, and it's almost malfeasance. And openly, where do I go with it? I can go to his office staff who promised everything would be hunky-dory, but then because of who she was and what she was and what she believed, she fucked my records. So here we go. You have a man who's passionate about rights, passionate about privacy, passionate about confidentiality, passionate about propriety, but when it comes to the girl he loves, he has every fucking right underneath American law to propose. Her immaturity is her immaturity, but my love of that girl will be remain lying, mine for the rest of my life, according to God in heaven and the angels around me. Now, if you don't like what I have to say, I don't really give a fuck. If you don't like me, I don't care about that either, because my guess is I've never solicited you for any type of business, any type of friendship, or any type of faith relationship. And that is not on me, it's on you. Because how you present yourself is how you present yourself. But when you walk through the fucking neighborhood like we're best pals, and then you stare at my beard because you did something immoral and illegal in the middle of the night and illicit to try to harm me, that is on your life before the Lord. And I don't give a shit what your faith is. You're going to face God someday, and God can give you COVID. Today I learned of the stupidity of a child who was sharing beverages with someone in her work who turned out to have COVID. Now, she lucked out that she allegedly doesn't have COVID now, but who is she swapping spit with now? Her boyfriend, her baby, other people, people not like me. Now, I can talk about these things because I highly doubt she's ever heard about my channel. I tried to explain it to her, and she was too wise in her ways to think that I had something to say worth listening to. In life, we have to decide how to listen, and a true gift of God, a true grace of God, a true giver from the Lord's house knows how to listen and how to give to the targets that the Lord has put in someone's life. Not the targets that you wish to create for someone's life. The lie you tell yourself is that your power is in abusing people's rights. The lie you tell yourself is that God is pleased with your attitudes about life. And that God in heaven is going to support your abuse of someone like me or anyone else like me with your attitudes, with your chemistries, and with your technologies. What a lie you've told yourself. In America we have rights, and you, sir, have forgotten where your rights came from. You've forgotten the wars that have been costed, the lives that have been lost, the tears that have been shed, and the blood that is in, has been spread. You have failed yourself completely, you have failed your community, you have failed your family, because when you started to cross the line into my life without my permission, without my consent, and without my rights to my own personhood, paperwork, property, and body, you fucked yourself.